Today I am talking about Young Don. He is a very popular YouTuber. He used to make animations, but then he kind of got reborn. He started taking his faith really seriously and identifying as a Christian. But then he took the wrong approach and that's what I want to focus on in this video because he started doing his own research and just going by Bible alone. And now he has come to the conclusion that Jesus is not God and he is denying the Trinity. Wrong. Even though the Trinity is clearly biblical, I mean, just read the Gospel of John. All of these are affirming the divinity of Christ. The Trinity has always been present, and it has always been taught by the church. We can read the earliest writings. They all taught the Trinity, but this is a problem with the American Protestant mindset, and why I said those who do not learn history are bound to repeat it. And that's exactly what is happening with young Don, is he is reinventing the wheel. He is reinventing heresies that were already dealt with, denying the Trinity, saying that Jesus is creation. This was literally dealt with in the 300s. All of this could be avoided if we just look at history. I mean, if you're going to join Christianity, something that is 2,000 years old, even older with the Old Testament, and then you're just going to pick up a Bible and start interpreting yourself, is that the responsible thing to do? The responsible thing to do would be to look at history. What did Jesus come to do? Did he come and just give us a Bible and say, interpret it yourself? No. In scripture, it says that Jesus established a church at Pentecost. The bishops, the Holy Spirit came on the bishops. Jesus gave the bishops, the apostles, the authority on earth. So if you're going to become a Christian, it makes sense to join that historic church that can trace its lineage back to the apostles that has apostolic secession. Because in the Old Testament, we see they constantly lay on hands. Well, that is continued in the Orthodox Church. And yes, some churches have split off, like the Catholic Church, like the Orientals, but the Orthodox Church has kept all of the same teachings. The Bible came from the church, not the other way around. Does it make any sense that Jesus would come and just give us this and say, you know what, just interpret it yourself? I mean, if you give the Bible to five different people, you're gonna have five different interpretations. How do you know Whose interpretation is right? What is your standard to judge? That is why you need holy tradition to look to the people before you to see how the church has always interpreted things. Because Christ said that the church is a pillar and foundation of truth and the gates of hell will not prevail because the Holy Spirit guides that church. It did not fall away. It has perpetually existed since the days of the apostles. And when you do that, you start picking up some books on church history and you read what happens, you realize what Don is saying isn't anything new. They debated these things hundreds of years ago. Very smart people. We could read the first. This is the Anti-Nicene Fathers, the Apostolic Fathers. Again, these are the people right after the Apostles. We can read their writings and see what they taught. And then we can read the Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers, like Augustine, and see what they taught. They're all teaching the same exact thing. There's no question about it. We can read the Nicene and post-Nicene fathers. We can read Basil. We have all these very smart people, the church fathers. We can see what they always taught. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. They debated this literally a thousand years ago. And if you're not reading church history, you're bound to just reinvent the same heresies over and over again. And what is a heresies? Heresies are when we subvert the truth. And heretics get creative. But an anti-Trinitarian heresy, they, they dealt with that very early on in the church. All of these different heresies, if we read church history, we see that they've already been addressed. They're just being restated in different ways by new people in a new age. You'll see that the church was unified in the first thousand years, calling councils and resolving the crisis and heresies of the time. Yes, there were some people who split off, but for the most part, the church was unified until the Roman Catholic Church the Pope, the Patriarch of the West, started changing the faith by adding the filioque to the creed, by having claims of papal supremacy. This would cause the Great Schism. And after that, Rome continued to add on to the faith. They added purgatory, indulgences, more and more and more. And some people within that church saw these errors, and they started removing things from the faith. And the Catholic Church didn't like that, and they eventually got pushed out when they were just trying to reform the church. This caused the Protestant Reformation, but they ended up creating a new theology. Martin Luther, one of the reformers, even removed books from the Bible. Who gave him the authority to do that? Why does one man get to remove books 
from the Bible. Those are the Reformed, and then we have the Radical Reformation, where they go even farther than the Protestant Reformers. They start getting rid of the priesthood. They start saying it's a symbolic Eucharist. They say, no, infant baptism is bad. It's a believer's baptism. More and more, a low church sermon versus a high church liturgy, even though liturgy is clearly biblical. Low church worship is not. All of this turmoil was happening in Europe in the 1500s and 1600s. And then America was founded, one of these colonies that had religious freedom, religious liberty. So all of these Protestants and radical reformers, they went to America and took their beliefs. And that's when they started to splinter even more and more because now they're just, there's, that's what America was founded on. All these crazy heretical cults with no authority operating on Bible alone. And we have two homegrown abominations. And you mix that with a highly individualistic spirit of America and it's super capitalistic and that's how you get thousands of different Protestant sects. This is what Father Josiah Trenum said. No culture in the world has produced more religious quacks peddling their eccentric brands of religious expression than the free market of American religion. That's the reality. That's why we see so many weird offshoots of real Christianity. And the thing is is that these fake offshoots are atheism factories because it's ridiculous. It's hard to take it seriously when it's just so goofy. We need real, authentic Orthodox Christianity. If you want to learn more about it, this is all you need as a Protestant. Please get this book. And now it's been over 200 years and that Protestant mindset has influenced every part of society. And now in the age of internet, anyone can come up and talk and speak what they think real Christianity is. And so we have Don, and he has a lot of Protestant presuppositions. And if he's watching this, we need to look to the people before us. That is the difference between humility and pride. Because the Protestant reformers and radical reformers, they were very prideful because what they taught, especially believing in believer's baptism versus infant baptism, denying the priesthood, deny saying that we're saved by faith alone, Bible alone, no one in the first 1500 years taught that. So if you're a ref one of these reformers, you have to think that everyone before you was wrong for the 1500 years since the days of the apostles, they were all teaching error. But now you got it right. No, we need to look to the people before us. The faith is a torch that has been passed down from generation to generation. We're not worshiping ashes. We're keeping that flame going so we can keep passing it down. That's what the church is. Now we're going to watch some parts of his stream where he comes out and denies the Trinity. It is three hours long, but I will try and include the best parts. Let's see. Let's go on ahead and just get right on into it. Yeah, man. It's time. Guys, it's time I, I, I told you the truth. It's time I told you the truth. Some time ago, I decided to start studying the Trinity. I decided to start studying the Trinity. You know, as a Christian, I mean, let me record this. As a Christian, you get what I like to call a, a Christian dogma starter package or a Christian doctrine starter package. A, a, a set of beliefs that you just inherit and they're very popular, you know, and they're, you know, you go into almost any church in America and there are certain things they're just going to tell you it's true and you just accept it. Why? Because the man on the pulpit, he's old. Teaching heresy to other people is about the worst thing that you can do because not only are you damaging your own soul, but also all the people that are listening and thousands of people are listening to Dawn. So I would be a little bit more careful. Like you became Christian, started taking it really seriously just like a year ago. A lot of people, they don't even like open their mouth about Christianity for like 10 years before you're publicly teaching something. And it's just really dangerous how careless he is being with just saying, well, yeah, I'm just like an anti-Trinitarian now versus it's like, He's bringing up that, oh, I, we're just listening to what the pastor says because it's popular, as if that's the only reason you listen to the church. If you believe in Jesus, he was very clear that his church will not defect, that the Holy Spirit guides the church. So how would the Holy Spirit allow the church to fall into error? That is what you are doing if you were saying that, oh, you know, the church has taught this since its beginning, but you know what? I think it, I got it figured out. That is dangerous and prideful thinking, and he's just carelessly saying it to his entire audience. Leading others into error is literally the worst thing that you can do. That's how you guarantee your, your ticket to hell. The only reason that I feel confident in 
telling people about the Orthodox Church is because I'm not reinventing anything. I'm not just saying what I think. I'm just repeating what the church has always taught. That's what it means to be Orthodox, to trust in God, to trust that the Holy Spirit guides the church, to trust in holy tradition and trust in these smarter people instead of depending on myself. You assume he's read the Bible a bunch? Probably even went to some kind of, of theological school, some kind of seminary, some kind of Bible school. And so he for sure knows what he's talking about. Also, the Bible is a complicated, mystical book that you can't understand and you need somebody to break it down for you and tell you the truth, right? And so that's the attitude I had. And of course, you know, I adopted several beliefs from, you know, the church I started attending, right? Once saved, always saved. That was one. I attended the Baptist church, the Trinity, of course. Um, then of course we got, uh, what else is that? a pre-tribulation rapture and, a, a and a, a host of other beliefs uh, that you just take as true. I'm glad that he's questioning the Baptist pressure, but he needs to look into orthodoxy because he's right. You know, it's not once saved, always saved. You can lose your salvation. He's also right. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. I have a video on that. You know, many of these things you hear growing up as well. And so you just take them. The law is done away with. You don't need to keep the commandments. The Sabbath is done away with. You can eat unclean animals. It's all fine. And, uh, you know, you look around YouTube and you see a bunch of people with just a, a zeal for God. And they're, they're saying a lot of the same things you believe. So just out of, you know a zeal for Jesus and wanting to spread it. You just start talking. You just start talking. And that's where most, a lot of people I say, that's where they stop. Right. And they just continue to read the Bible through this initial lens, this initial ideological lens that they received when they became a Christian. And whenever they come across a verse that seems to contradict one of their, you know, initial beliefs, you just kind of, you know, Either you, you brush it under the rug or you just chalk it up to, well, uh, maybe there's a way to explain this that aligns with my beliefs. Or you look to church tradition to see how they interpreted that verse. You're probably not the first person to have those questions. We should look and see what the people before us, how they interpreted that verse. They probably had a similar question. But me personally... I knew from the beginning that it would be my goal to understand the Bible. It would be my goal to truly understand the truths of the Bible. I was never interested in, you know, healing people, prophesying, casting out demons. I was never interested in all of that. If I wanted God to bless me with anything is I wanted him to bless me with true understanding of his word. That's good because there are so many Pentecostals in pre -less just making Christianity look like an absolute joke because of all these miracles they're doing and speaking in tongues. So I'm glad that he didn't do that. That's what I prayed for time and time again. It's what I still pray for more, more than anything else in regards to, you know, spiritual gifts and things of that nature. And so as time went on, the scales started to fall from my eyes. As time went on, God went ahead and uh, started revealing things to me. The first thing he did was show me that his law was not done away with. That was the first major deception that he took me out of. How do you know if it's God or a demon misguiding you? You need a guide. That's why in Orthodox Christianity, you have your spiritual father. You have a confessor that can help you through these things. In Orthodoxy, we are very skeptical of all this because this is exactly how de demons and the devil try to confuse you with these false visions. And isn't that interesting? He talks about bringing the law back. It sounds like he, he is Judaizing the faith. Again, Judaizing the faith was like literally one of the first heresies in the church. I cover this in my Messianic Judaism debunked video. No, 
We are in the, the New Testament, the New Covenant, the New and Eternal Covenant. Or was it that hell is not a place of eternal torture where the souls of the damned will be tortured perpetually forever and ever? Amen. But in fact, as Jesus says, those who aren't saved will perish. The word perish means to be destroyed. They will be destroyed, incinerated, cast into the lake of fire. Hell and death will be cast into the lake of fire, and these things will be done away. That's not true. It goes on forever. So there will be a particular judgment when you die, but then there's the final judgment, and after that, there's a general resurrection of all mankind, including the wicked. You know, even the wicked will be resurrected but depending on how you lived on how you love god will it will determine how you experience god if you loved god if you love the good then the experience of the eschaton is going to feel amazing now if you hated god if you hate going to church then in that eschaton it is going to feel painful but since while i was at it testing all of these beliefs these lies that i've inherited from mainstream churchianity i said well how about the trinity then stop consider the possibility that man has miscategorized these people we see the fundamental problem with protestantism on display right here because he starts to see that his pastor is wrong on certain things which he is right about baptists teach wrong things and he keeps removing hats just like Martin Luther did with the Catholics, but then they removed too many things. Now he says, well, if the Baptists can be wrong about all this, then they could be wrong about the Trinity. This Protestant mindset leads to endless reformation, endless schism. The answer is not to continue down the Protestant path. The answer is to go back in history to find the church that never defected. The church that is guided by the Holy Spirit, and that is only the Orthodox Church. He's a son of God. That's what he calls himself. How many times does God the Son occur in the Bible? Zero. How many times does God the Holy Spirit occur in the Bible? Zero. The full stream is three hours, but I think you get the point. And this part, he just found some random guy. He seems like he's a Messianic Jew or something about obeying the law. Don, Don, why are you listening to this random guy? You're not going to listen to mainstream churchianity. Yeah, I agree. The Baptists are wrong in all this. But why are you following this random guy online? And you may say, well, I'm just some random guy online. Well, I'm some random guy who actually brought up sources, who brought up the church fathers, the people who actually made up the historic church. I can back up all my arguments because I'm depending on a 2,000-year-old tradition. Not this guy. Messianic Judaism was started in the 1960s. Don, why are you trusting this guy? And he said the Holy Spirit was in the Bible zero times. That doesn't even make any sense. The Holy Spirit is in the Bible all over the Bible, in the New and Old Testament, because the Trinity has always been present. What are you talking about? Something about orthodoxy. I think the Bible is written in a way where you can understand it plainly. I think it's very obvious when it's speaking in a figurative, metaphorical sense and when it's speaking in a literal sense. And the more of the Bible that you read, the more that it makes sense. Because you'll notice that it all works together. It all builds upon each other. It all leans. He actually watched Jay explain orthodoxy on stream, but he didn't really seem to understand it. This was a few months ago. Uh, to you, you, when you call it Mary the Queen of Heaven, and, and that's who the Queen of Heaven is referred to in the Bible. Bro, I, you, I don't know. <laughs> Sound to me like y'all got a problem. You know, Protestants always have to say something bad about Mary. Yes, Mary is the queen of heaven. Why is that? Well, in the Old Testament, we know, okay, we know Jesus is the king. In the Old Testament, who was the queen? The queen was the mother of the king. Who is the mother of the king? Of Jesus, of the new Israel. It is Mary. Mary is a mother of Jesus. And Jesus is God. She is the Theotokos. So Mary is the queen of heaven. Came Christian is because the emperor got in converted to Christianity. I can't remember the name of that emperor. He's the one who founded the um the council of Nasima or something like that. But let's go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my other videos. I've debunked Protestants, Catholics, Muslims, atheists, and I'm gonna keep doing it into the future. And if you want to see more videos on Young Don, watch Sam Shamoon. He went extremely in depth showing the errors of Young Don. Young Don, you know, everyone, please pray for him.
God bless.